Final Fantasy IX was released at the end cycle of the PlayStation 1 in the United States on November 13, 2000 by Squaresoft. Yes, Squaresoft, not Square Enix. It marked the third and last Final Fantasy entry for the system and was directed by Hiroyuki Ito with producers Hironobu Sakaguchi and Shinji Hashimoto. The world is called Gaia and we begin the journey in Alexandria, a place for nobles and peasants alike. A theater ship comes to the castle for a performance of a lifetime and amidst all the festivities, underlying conflicts and battles are about to take place. A princess is in danger and it's up to a cast of misfits to find out who they are and how they belong to a world torn apart. Of course, being a Final Fantasy game, you can already tell that number 9 includes a turn-based battle system, a great collection of music composed by the legendary Nobuo Uematsu, and a heavily invested storyline, but I would never have known that when I first played the game. This was my first role-playing game and what a way to start it. After playing previous titles in the series, you can definitely tell this Final Fantasy goes back to the good old times after the modern takes of 7 and 8. Each character had a unique class to go with their crazy personality, so every team member has to be taken into account. You have the Master Thief and Zidane that can obtain essential weapons by stealing them from enemies, Princess Garnet that can heal your allies, and the magnificent Black Mage Vivi that uses magic to fend off foes among half a dozen other characters that deal with enemies differently. Getting familiar with their abilities is the only way to get past the dangerous bosses that lies ahead. To get further ahead, there are a lot of weapons and armor to be collected and abilities to be learned, so some grinding is necessary, but it never feels too out of hand. The pacing makes it relatively easy knowing that the next checkpoint is never too far away. What is too out of hand for other players are the frequent random encounters the game gives you. At this day and age, it will be hard for kids nowadays to play the waiting game for too long. Also another gripe is traversing through the outdated graphics such as the background assets, since it is difficult to figure out where you can and can't walk, and by the time you find out, another battle will probably take place. As a side note, it does make it easier to place whatever the hell item they wanted on the world without it looking weird. When battles tire you out, there are many games to be played, from catching frogs, hunting treasures with chocobos, to playing an addicting card game called Tetra Master. There is always something you can do during your time off. The world is large and there are a lot of areas and secrets to be explored. Just make sure you are leveled up enough. Of course, you can't review a JRPG without talking about its story and among the great battle system and the music composed, the story of Final Fantasy IX is really all the emotions mixed in with fluidity. The writing for its time is phenomenal. You'll laugh endlessly on conversations and banter between characters and really feel emotions out of the blossoming relationships at hand. And the romance here feels more real than most other Japanese RPG fluff. Things do get cheesy, but don't forget this was released almost two decades ago. The character progression is what makes every Final Fantasy great, and is no different here. It is a tale mostly about self-discovery in one way or another. Everyone thinks of their place in the context of the world, and conflicts arise gradually for them to solve till the very end. While the world is drastically different from ours, anyone can definitely relate. If you happen to like a character that isn't from the main storyline, the game is filled with active time events that you can play at any time. It basically shows you another situation happening at around that time and it's one of the better parts of the game showing you different backstories and angles. <laughs> the
The style and graphics of the game is also remarkably different from previous and future Final Fantasies that would take place. Everyone looks short with abnormally large heads looking quite comical. It had a Disney approach in that it has very stylized characters, even having animals that act as humans. But I think the design made the characters stand out to really appreciate everyone's animated personalities. This game is far from the brooding, girly male characters Final Fantasy is generally known for. All in all, with all their different personalities, it all works and the chemistry is definitely there that makes the cast so likable. What I loved about Final Fantasy IX is how it does many things so differently and not just from the variety of enemies you encounter. On one stage you are solving a set of puzzles and on another you are asked to switch your weapons around a castle that looks upside down. It's these tricks and subtle additions that make every stage fresh at every chapter. Every time I play this game it takes me back to simpler times when I was so involved in playing Super Mario to suddenly transitioning into a larger world filled with characters and a story. And at 10 years old, I was pretty blown away. If you are a fan of Japanese role playing games or just want a feel of the history of Final Fantasy, I would definitely ask you to try this game out. The game is also updated on Steam this year with a higher resolution, so there is no better time to check it out. Love.